One of the projects you'll be completing for AP English is the Independent Reading Project. And we'll look at a selection of books that have a really strong thematic element in them, specifically about society, human nature, and human emotion. And we'll have a list of books at the end that you can look at to choose from. Some are fiction and some are nonfiction. And these books are really specific. The authors have made a strong statement about their worlds through these selections. So you'll read not only for the story that the author tells, but also for the statement that they're making. So here are some questions you might consider. Does a character represent a segment of society? Is a character manipulating another via his or her rhetoric? Does the setting or plot suggest a contemporary issue disguised by the genre? Is there a universal theme? What does the author say about the book? So you'll choose a book from the list to read independently on your own so you can go get a copy of the book. A lot of these are actually online for free or for cheap so you can get them on your um, your device or your computer or something. Some are uh, are free. Um, it just depends on what you choose. Uh, most of these you can get at half price books for a really great deal. So these books are divided into six sections. Um, two students cannot read the same book. So we'll have a sign up on Emoto for you to pick a book and it's first come first serve. For each book you'll complete four complimentary assignments and they're all due at the same time and I highly encourage you not to put this off because it actually turns out to be a large chunk of work that will not stress you out if you just do it as you go. So the first thing you'll do is a cultural context analysis. That's just a simple one page typed up report on the cultural context of the book's setting and the social class of the characters. So you're not talking about the setting in which the author is, you're talking about what's going on in the book that's important for these thematic things that you're looking for. So you'll address the major events of the era, any social norms and um, typical concerns of people living in this geographical area and era. And if you, you will use outside sources, of course, so you'll need to include that source in your in-text citations of this section and also include the source information on a works cited page. And then the second assignment you'll do is an author's background. And again, this is just a simple one page on the author's background and where the book fits in his or her career. So that's where you need to look up is this author, an activist, an award winner, a member of the a class about which he or she is writing, is the author a college graduate, self-taught, a politician, a parent, young or old? And the most important part of this is how do these things foretell the statement made in the book? It's the author matters in these books that we're looking at. So that's why this part is in there. Again, you will definitely need outside sources for this. So make sure you include in-text citations and um, a works cited page for that. Number three is a reading response journal. This is the part that I highly encourage you to do as you go and don't wait to the last minute to fill this out. So you'll keep a handwritten or typed journal, it's up to you, and complete 20 dialectic journal entries. That is just spread out throughout the book however you want it to. So just pick the things that you want to write about, things that stick out to you the most. Um, you, 20 is easy to get for these books. So you'll find the guidelines for those dialectic journals right below and we'll talk about that in a second. And then lastly is a short analysis paper. It's a two to three page paper discussing the major themes of the book. Are they universal or specific to the era or setting? Address the role this book plays in the cultural context of the era, as well as the purpose of the author's message. And was it successful? This is where you have to come in and give some sort of evaluation. This is not a summary of the book. Please avoid mere plot summary. I really don't care to read about the plot summary. Um, I, what I do care for is you taking some of the elements from the plot or the characters and connecting that to the theme. So there, there will be some discussion of what happened in the book and some plot elements. But please don't do your typical book report where you're just telling me what happens. That's not the point of the analysis paper. And then you'll include your separate works cited page in MLA format with any and all sources that you use on the project, including the book that you chose. So make sure you're really vigilant about keeping your sources as you're researching. And so um, you'll need to turn your project into Emoto by the due date and also prepare a five minute report over the book. And I want you to avoid 
plot summary and this five minute report because you really don't have time. Instead, share interesting themes or characters in the novel and why we should read the novel. And you can be as creative as you like for this oral report. I really don't have a preference. So it's however you want to present it. But I really want you to focus on um, just a few details of the plot, the main characters, and basically what the idea behind the text is. And you might even think of it as a sales pitch. Why should we read this book? Do you recommend it or do you not? Why, why do you recommend it or why don't you recommend it? What were some questions you had at the end of the book? Um, things like that. So it's just an interesting discussion of the book and it's only five minutes. So um, you can prepare notes for that. But I don't want you to read from the paper you wrote verbatim. You can use that as notes. But I want you to present a nice discussion, a five minute oral report over your book. Let's talk about some dialectical journal entries, um, how you should write them. And the basic format that I want you to follow is this three column format where you have the passage from the text, the page number, and the comments or questions that you have. So on the passages from the text, this is an appropriate amount to include. So this is what you should be writing or typing. Um, so the, the most important parts of the quote. So don't just go, they carried dot dot dot, they would never be at a loss for things to carry because that in itself is missing the entire context that you really want to talk about. This is one of the most important passages. And so you want to leave in the things that are important. Don't just dot 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 them because you don't want to write them down. So this is for points. So please don't, don't miss that you can't just dot 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 on here. And so give the page number of course, and then this is where you come in and you give your comments or questions, and I'm going to give you some suggestions below. But I want you to read this and see how this dialectic journal is making connections to the text in a really meaningful way. And it's not just asking a question like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen next, or I wonder what they mean by carried. That's not a good dialectic journal, and you won't get points for that at all. So these require thought, and um, you may raise questions in here, but um, I want you to focus on, if you raise a question, answer it as best as you can based on, oops, <laughs> based on what you know, um, based on what you know from the text. So here's an example. O'Brien, which is the author, chooses to end the first section of the novel with this sentence. He provides excellent visual details of what each soldier in Vietnam would carry for day-to-day -day fighting. He makes you feel the physical weight of what soldiers have to carry for simple survival. When you combine the emotional weight of loved ones at home, the fear of death, and the responsibility for the men you fight with, with this physical weight, you start to understand what soldiers in Vietnam dealt with every day. This quote sums up the confusion that the men felt about the reasons they were fighting in the war and how they clung to the only certainty, things they had to carry in a confusing world where normal rules were suspended. See how this is connecting to the theme What's this saying about society, about human nature and human ambition? So that's where you need to focus your dialectic journals. This isn't just a, oh, they used, they used a rhetorical question, or this is parallel structure. You're not just pointing out things in the text. You're actually kind of processing on the paper. That's why they're called dialectic journals. It's supposed to be like a conversation between yourself and the text. So choosing passages from the text. Look for quotes that seem significant, powerful, thought-provoking, or puzzling. For example, you might record effective or creative use of stylistic or literary devices. That's device to meeting. Choose passages that remind you of your own life or something you've seen before. Look for structural shifts or turns in the plot. A passage that makes you realize something you hadn't seen before. Examples of patterns, recurring images, ideas, colors, symbols, or motif motifs. You could track those through the novel. Passages with confusing language or unfamiliar vocabulary. You can even define those. You can look them up and look up, write the denotation and the connotation that you get from the context. Those are all possibilities. Events you find surprising or confusing. That's when plot twists occur and um, you might not have expected that. And talk about how the author led you to believe that one thing was going to happen and yet it didn't. And why do you think they did that? Passages that illustrate a particular character or setting. So those are some ideas for the types of passages that you should choose. And then responding to the text is that third column that we read the example. 
Um, you can respond to the text in a variety of ways, and the most important thing to remember is that your observations should be specific and detailed. You can write as much as you want for each entry. I would go for at least three sentences for each entry. So you can have these basic responses, and you guys can read those on your own. And here are some sample sentence starters if you're not sure where to start. Um, but this is where you're going to get the most benefit. Is looking at is making higher level responses. That's going to help you with your analysis. It's going to give you the most points. Is to take it to that higher level that you guys already know how to do. So that's analyzing, making connections between the characters or events, making connections to a different text or film or song, um, discuss the words, ideas, or actions the, of the author or character, consider an event or description from the perspective of a different character, analyze the passage and its relationship to the story as a whole. That's where you want to land is on these higher level responses. And again, this is where you're getting your points. Okay, so those connections, this is, I don't even know how many, this is several sentences. That's what you should go for, is um, journaling out what your responses are to the text. And here's your list, and you guys can read this um, on the actual document. And this is a starting point for selecting books. You can definitely select one off here and enjoy it and be fine. It's not exclusive, and if you find a book that interests you and you think it might fit into a category like this, remember we're talking about society, books that have a really strong thematic element that's making a point about society, um, email me or talk to me and I'll, I'll look into it and see if that would be appropriate for this subject. And also appropriate for the class. Um, if there's a book on here that you feel like you don't want to read because it might be inappropriate, don't read it. It's okay. So you might want to Google some of these and um, see if it, it's a story that interests you and then um, sign up for your book. Remember it's first come first serve and so these are divided into just different time periods. Um, so we have the colonial, revolutionary, early national literature and you'll see some familiar names on here. Then it goes to slave narratives and slave fiction, um, novels from the Civil War, westward movement, post-Civil War, and industrial age. So you'll see a lot of um, familiar names in here too. And again, you could read other uh, Mark Twain books or something if you if you have another one that you'd rather read. And then we have the early 20th century and modernism into World War II. Those are interesting ones talking about society. And then we have World War II and later 20th century. And then finally, contemporary and postmodern. And there are so many more novels that could come under here um, that do relate to society. And so, again, this is an independent reading project. I want you to take this on as your own and do something that interests you and and discover something new maybe try a, a novel that you never even thought about reading before or something that you might have heard about but you kind of just never had time to read this is your chance to do that and so this is kind of just in your hands you'll have several weeks to work on this at your own pace and um, present your your report to the class and turn in your assignments so I hope you enjoy it let me know if you have any questions